Hey guys, how's it going? Brian from Brian Boas here. The 2020 baby boa birthing season is right around the corner for me. And for me, this is definitely a highlight of the year because I finally get to see all of the beautiful baby boas that I've worked so hard all these months to produce. Today, I wanted to talk about boa birth, including how you know your female boa is about ready to give birth, as well as the proper care of the mother boa and the babies right after birth. If you find this video helpful, I'd really appreciate if you'd subscribe to the Brian Boas YouTube channel so you don't miss out on any future videos on boa breeding as well as updates on my boa breeding activities. So how can you predict when your female gravid boa is going to give birth? Well, the most reliable way is to take the date of your post ovulation shed and to add 105 days. And this will give you a pretty good idea about when the due date will be. I found that in general for uh, red, true red tail BCC boas, it's more like 110 or 115 days. They typically give birth a little later. And for some of my other boas, like my boa imperator localities, sometimes it's as early as 100 days after the post ovulation shed. Sometimes it'll be right at 105 days. The date predicted by the post ovulation shed gives you a pretty good idea, but there are some boas that go quite a bit longer. I've had boas deliver up to 130 days or so after the post ovulation shed for some of my true red tails. And there wasn't any issue, fortunately. You know, obviously I was getting very antsy because it was such a long time. But just because that date comes and your animal hasn't given birth, don't necessarily panic. Just keep an eye on her and check in on her and make sure she's doing okay. If it goes past, you know, 140 days or so, you probably want to seek out your reptile veterinarian. Another thing is if it keeps going on longer and longer, you may have gotten the post ovulation shed wrong. So I found sometimes what I thought was the post ovulation shed is actually the shed before that and the shed after that turns out to be the post ovulation shed. To add a little confusion, boas will often shed in between the post ovulation shed and birth. So you sometimes don't know exactly what the post ovulation shed is. The way you can calculate 105 days is to use an online day date duration calculator. Basically, you just go to the site and you put in the date of your post ovulation shed. You add 105 days and it will give you the date that corresponds to that interval. So you may not get a post ovulation shed. You know, I've had a few litters where the female just doesn't give a post ovulation shed. And so in that case, you may not know the exact date that's likely for your female to give birth, but there are other cues you can watch that will tell you that your female is about to give birth. So one of the landmarks to look out for that lets you know that the birth is likely just a few days away is something called the waxy stool. So your female boa will defecate and the feces will have this kind of waxy, plasticky, you know, sheen to it. It almost looks kind of this grayish, um, unusual form. And it can vary a little bit. Sometimes it just looks like regular feces. But basically the female is kind of clearing herself out prior to giving birth. And you don't always see this. Sometimes you just miss it, it gets buried in the litter. Uh, sometimes the female doesn't really produce a waxy stool, but it's something to wash out for that lets you know that it's probably within a week that your female is going to give birth. So then a few days later, the female will typically start acting really restless. She'll be moving around the cage and turning over substrate and getting under the substrate or towel, paper towels or whatever you have in there. Basically, she's just getting her uh, birthing site ready so she's got a suitable area to give birth. And you probably know that the animal is going to give birth within a day or two once you see this. And then what will typically happen is when she's ready to give birth, she'll line up against the side of the enclosure and kind of stretch out her body. And then you'll see this contraction. It's almost like this wave of contraction that goes down her abdomen. And that will be pushing out the babies. 
And so if the female has a lot of slugs, the unfertilized ova called slugs, these are harder to give birth and the female is going to have to work harder and do you know, more contractions to get those out. And they typically take longer to be born or you know, to be passed. If the female has all babies, these are kind of softer and they're more flexible and they can be uh, you know, forced out of the cloaca faster. So the, the birthing will go faster if it's all babies with no slugs. And the birthing process can take anywhere from six or seven hours um, down to just maybe about a half hour or so. Sometimes if it's just all babies, they just come out every few minutes, there's another baby coming out and it's a nice easy litter. So, you know, I, I hope that my litters are like that this year. Often I don't get to witness the birth. Often it happens at night and I just see it in the morning. But sometimes I do get to witness it. So when your female gives birth, you want to make sure she's done before you go in there. And basically she'll stop doing the contractions and all the babies will be out. And then she'll be kind of pushing them with her snout and kind of trying to open up the sacs. So they're born in these um, translucent amniotic sacs that have all these blood vessels. And there's a cord called the umbilical cord that's attached to the yolk sac. And so typically the mother will kind of try to push them out of those amniotic sacs and kind of break them open with her snout. So I usually let my females do this, you know, just to give the babies a good head start. Sometimes they don't really get involved that much. But once you're sure the birth is done and you've, you probably want to get your camera and take a lot of nice pictures to remember it, um, you want to go ahead and you want to remove the female from the enclosure. And the females will typically be more aggressive at this point because they're protecting their babies and they don't want you there, you know, messing around with their newborn babies. So you may need to um, restrain the female very gently. Typically I'll put like a, a, a paper um, a, a pillowcase or a snake sack over the female just so I don't get bitten and I gently remove her from the enclosure. So you gently remove the female from the enclosure and then give her a soak in lukewarm water around 85 to 90 degrees Fahrenheit. And I typically use these, uh, this is a 56 quart Sterilite tub, which is a good size. I just put water in maybe three or four inches and then I put my female in there and I let her soak. You want to clean off all the afterbirth and all the remnants of the birth from the female so she basically doesn't smell the babies anymore. That's why she's acting aggressively. But if you can get that smell of the babies off, she's not going to be as aggressive. So the next thing is to gently remove the babies from the enclosure. And you'll notice that there's really three possibilities. You can have live babies that are moving around. You can have slugs, which are the unfertilized ova, which look like these um, oval shaped yellowish grayish um, objects that are kind of rubbery to the touch and then you may have stillborn young which are young that, that are not alive. So you'll want to very carefully note the number of live birth animals, the number of slugs, and the number of stillborn and put that in your records and you also want to make any notes about the um, how far along the stillborn babies are, whether they're fully formed or whether they're partially formed, if there's any birth defects, etc. I usually bury the slugs and stillborn in my garden, you know, give them a proper burial and they can go on and fertilize the plants in my garden that way, kind of a more natural uh, end to them. So it's always really depressing to see these stillborns. In some cases, they're fully formed. And you've got to wonder, were they born uh, when they were dead or did they die during the birthing process? Sometimes it's just a, a little bit unclear. So when you're talking about the live young, you can have live young which are moving around, which are completely out of the amniotic sac, or you can have young which are still in the amniotic sac. And when you remove them, if they're still in the sac, you very gently want to transfer the animal in the sac with the yolk attached. You'll see this whitish um, kind of fatty looking substance, which is the yolk. If there's still yolk remaining, you want to be very gentle not to detach it from the babies because you want to allow them to absorb as much of the yolk as possible to get a good head start. 
removed it all into a suitable tub and I also use 56 liter Sterilite tubs for my babies. You just line it with paper towels and then spray it down so it's nice and moist and just gently remove the whole mass of babies, yolk sacs, amniotic sacs, etc. into there. You want to allow the babies to naturally detach from the, from the umbilical cords. So if they're still attached, you don't want to yank them or anything like that, or they can get injured. And if the baby still has significant yolk attached, you want to leave that intact because the baby is going to absorb more nutrients from the yolk over the next few days. In some cases, you'll see babies have these very swollen abdomens. Often they're born a little premature or, you know, some of the babies aren't as developed. And in that case, you want to allow them to absorb that yolk to give them the best chance for success. In some cases, you may have a mother who gives birth prematurely and all the babies are like that, in which case you have to be really careful and gentle with these babies. Um, when I have babies which are kind of premature, either the whole litter or, you know, a few from the litter, Usually I'll put them in a separate tub, a smaller tub that I have paper towel and I keep them nice and moist and I put the whole thing, the yolk sac um, as well as the amniotic sac so they can just be there and absorb as much as they can. You also want to make sure they're able to get out of the amniotic sac. So often the mother will kind of push and kind of make a hole in it so the baby can get out. But if the animal looks like it's trapped in there, you can kind of very gently with your fingers kind of poke a hole through there um, just to allow the animal to get up. But you don't want to be yanking on the umbilical cord or causing them any trauma like that. The separate tub that I put my babies in has a heat mat with a thermostat set to 90 degrees that is on one half of the tub. The other side of the tub is kept at ambient room temperature of about 80 degrees and I have a layer of paper towels on the bottom. I also wad up some paper towels to act for hiding places for the babies. And then I spray it down with um, water to keep it nice and moist for the babies. So you'll find that after a few hours, it'll start to kind of get this funky smell. There's a very distinctive odor of birth of babies, boas, which obviously boa keepers love. Most non-boa keepers probably don't love it so much. But you want to change the paper towels um, at first about twice a day because they're just going to build up all of that old, the, you know, the, the residue of birth. Um, and it can get a little funky pretty fast. So just clean it up and put in new paper towels um, about twice a day for the few, first few days and keep them nice and moist. And you want to observe the babies that had those big swollen abdomens and whether they're absorbing the yolk sac. You'll find, unfortunately, some of the babies don't make it. After a few days, typically, you may have a baby die. Often, there's really nothing you could have done. It just had some kind of internal defect, and unfortunately, it wasn't its fate to survive. So remove the dead ones. You know, make careful note of for your records. You'll see that the living babies are going to start to kind of pile up on each other and form this kind of pile of baby boas. They just like to kind of congregate and make them feel safe. So allow them to do this. Um, and typically I keep the baby boas together like this for about a week or so. I forgot to mention, you want to be absolutely sure that the lid of the tub is firmly in place because even though the babies don't look very big, they can always push their way out. And I actually did have a baby escape on me last year, which luckily I found a few days later. Well, you know, I won't make that mistake again. But um, getting back to the babies, once they're about seven days old or so, you want to put them in separate tubs. And depending on the size of the babies, I put them either in six quart Sterilite tubs or in the larger 16 quart Sterilite tubs. And I did a video a few weeks ago showing you my baby racks. You may want to check that out. Um, and I do this shortly before the babies shed, when they typically shed at about 10 days of age, after which I give them the first meal. And in a future video, I want to talk more about baby boa husbandry. 
But for this video, I'm going to get back to the mother. I realized that I kind of skipped ahead with the babies. But we have our mother boa that's soaking in the lukewarm water. So while she's soaking, after you remove the babies, you want to thoroughly clean out the, the enclosure or tub. You want to spray it down, change the substrate, change everything. Make sure you get out that baby boa smell because the mother might be more aggressive if she still can smell the babies. And so once it's nice and clean and you've soaked your female for about an hour, you wanna gently dry her off and put her back in the fresh enclosure. You wanna kinda of check in on her every few hours just to make sure she's okay. There's no sign of retained slugs or if her abdomen still looks kinda of swollen, she might not have passed all of the babies or slugs. And if that's the case, you want to seek out a reptile vet to advise you on your next course of action for her. Luckily, this doesn't happen all that often. So the female will be very hungry after having given birth. So I always feed my females the day following when they give birth. And you want to feed her a one size smaller than normal uh, rodent. So if she normally eats large rats, you want to feed her a medium sized rat. And typically she'll eat it really fast. And then I'll typically feed a regular size large rat a week later just to kind of give her a head start um, in putting back on that mass. You'll, you'll notice that females can look very deflated. They're very skinny and they look much thinner after they give birth to all those babies. Typically a female will shed about a week to 10 days after giving birth and then you can um, I typically will feed my females a little bit more frequently for the first month or two after giving birth, just so they can put back on some of that weight, just to make sure they're back on track. And I don't feed, I don't breed my females typically two years in a row, or every, you know, two years in a row. I'll, I'll wait a year in between. So only every other year does a female give birth and get bred, so she's able to put back on weight for the following year where she doesn't breed. So I thought I'd end the video by showing you one of this year's hopeful first-time fathers. This is a five-year-old male Pacalpa Peruvian boa, two red tail boa. And so this guy was born here back in 2015 and he really stood out from the rest of the litter. He has these really nice peaked shaped saddles. He was also uh, bigger. He was one of the largest babies and you know he's grown you know quite a bit since then. Um, he's got this beautiful dark golden color and he's actually darkened up a little bit since he's grown. You can see all of the beautiful speckling that he's got. So some um, Pacalpa Peruvians will actually turn almost all black. They have this melanistic form that has an increase in black pigment as they get older. So this guy isn't you know anything quite near as much black pigment as some of the boas but He's definitely a little bit darker than the rest of my litter. And this guy, hopefully, he'll be uh, a successful father. You know, his uh, girlfriend is sitting on her hot spot right now, hopefully incubating his soon-to-be babies, and her babies, of course. So, fingers crossed on this litter. So, I hope this video was helpful to you and what to expect if you have a female who's about to give birth. As always, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to shoot me a line. Thanks for watching and enjoy your boas.